All right, so we all know that if we want to control what blueprints our players have access to, we need to use a plugin called Blueprint Manager. Blueprint Manager is available from UMod. I'm going to put a link to it in the video description down below. I've done videos on this plugin in the past, but it recently had some major updates to it that I'm really excited to show you. The most important of which is the ability to control when during your wipe cycle is a blueprint available to the player. We're gonna get into all of that and more right after my really quick intro. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy where I'm teaching you everything that you need to know about owning and operating a successful Rust server. On this channel, I do plugin reviews and tutorials, plus I wanna give you all of the tools that make your job just a little bit easier. So if you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on. And of course, if you take any value out of this video, don't forget to leave a like on the video. And I definitely wanna hear from you, so don't forget to leave a comment as well. All right, so we're heading back into the land of free and fully available to everybody plugins available from umod.org. Now Blueprint Manager has been maintained by Whispers88 and you'll probably notice that my last couple of videos are circled around Whispers. I don't know why, it's just the way that it happened to work out. So if you've used Blueprint Manager in the past, you're probably going to notice a change if you grab this most recent version. Of course, if we go into the Permissions Manager for Blueprint Manager, you're going to see that there's a bunch of different categories there that weren't available before. So now what Whispers has done has broken up the blueprints into different categories, which they always should have been done that way anyways. So now we can grant blueprints from certain categories to certain groups of players, depending on what type of an environment we want to create on our server. So maybe if you wanted to make it so the players didn't have to do any researching whatsoever for all of the electrical components, we could simply grant this electrical category and then all of the default players would have access to all of those blueprints. And the same thing goes with each and every one of these individual categories. And of course, in contrast to that, if we want to grant the different workbench levels, we can do that as well. Down at the bottom here, you've got workbench level zero, level one, level two, level three, level three is on the next page. And you can grant access to all of those blueprints on those different levels simply by granting that permission to that group. Now there's also this custom perm one and custom perm two. We're gonna get into that in just a minute once we go into the config file. Inside the config file is where it starts getting really fun and I'm really happy to see these changes to this plugin. So if this is your first time installing Blueprint Manager, this is what your configuration file is going to look like. Actually, even if you have a previous version, this is what your Blueprint Manager config file is going to look like. Because when you install the new version, it's going to rewrite your configuration file so that it looks just like this. So by default, simple mode is set to true. Don't worry about that. We're going to come back to that in just a minute. Update players on permissions change is another really important thing because a lot of people were finding that once they were granting the permissions to the players, it wasn't actually taking effect. The player had to log out and log back in, and then they would have access to those blueprints. That's no longer the case as long as this is set to true, which by default it is. The blueprints that the player has access to is going to be updated automatically as soon as the permission is granted to them. We of course have a blacklist in here just like we did before. If there are blueprints that you absolutely don't want anybody to be able to learn on your server, you of course would add those short item names to your blacklist, which would make it so that nobody could ever learn that blueprint no matter what they tried to do. That works really well if you're building like a primitive server and you don't want players to be able to learn guns or C4 or whatever. We also still have a default blueprint list. So if you want to build like a custom default blueprint list, you can just add those item short names to this list right here. And then everyone that joins your server will have access to those blueprints. If you just want everyone on your server to have access to all blueprints, this is not the way to do that. You would use the permission tagged as all. Now we also have this section where we can set up custom blueprint lists that allow access to specific blueprints that we define inside this configuration file. So let's say you have like VIP players and you want to grant them access to something like high external stone walls right at the day of wipe then of course you would add high external stone walls to this list and then grant your vips access to this custom permission as you can see here whispers 88 has the custom list set to the rock and the torch just to show you what the syntax needs to look like when you're adding different items to these lists all right now we get to get into the fun stuff like i said before the simple mode is set to true by default so if we change this to false you're gonna see something really amazing happen. We're gonna save that. We're of course gonna reload the Blueprint Manager plugin. And then you're gonna see your configuration file change a lot. But don't worry about it, don't get intimidated by it. It does become a huge file, but it's all broken up into individual items. So let's just have a look at an individual item, but just know that each one of these rules can be set for every single item in the game. So we're gonna be looking at timed explosives. So is this a default blueprint? Obviously in most cases, you would wanna set this to false. This blueprint can be researched. This is set to true by default. The amount of scrap required in order to research this item. 
Unlock minutes after wipe means this blueprint will be available to everybody after a certain amount of time has passed on your wipe cycle. By default, this is set to negative one, which basically means this is disabled. And from this point forward, I'm just going to read Whisper's exact words. If this is set to false, it will block the tech tree and workbench researching. Auto unlock minutes after wipe will automatically give players the blueprints if the unlock minutes after wipe time is set to anything other than minus one, meaning that it's been disabled. Unlock minutes after wipe is essentially a timer which functions off of can research and the auto unlock. So if can research is set to false and auto unlock is set to true, it means the player won't be able to research a blueprint and after the specified amount of time of wipe has passed, then everyone will just be given access to that blueprint. So if can research is set to false and auto unlock is false, it just means that it will be available to research after the set time. So if you wanted to make it so that nobody could research the timed explosive within the first 24 hours of wipe, this is exactly what you would set your configuration file to look like for timed explosives. In this specific scenario, after the 24 hours has passed, then somebody would then be able to research the timed explosive, same as they would normally be able to in a vanilla scenario. If can research is set to true and auto unlock minutes after wipe is also set to true, this will make it so the players will be able to research this item even though that 24 hour period hasn't expired yet. So basically what we're doing here is we're defining if and when a player is able to research a blueprint. So what this does is it makes it so that you can control what types of activities can occur on your server depending on what point in the wipe you're at. So let's say you wanted to make it so that nobody could raid anybody within the first seven days of your wipe cycle. You would go through and block out all of the raiding tools so that nobody was able to research those blueprints within the first seven days. And then you have the option, of course, do you want to automatically give them the blueprints or do you want to make it so that they now have the ability to research those items in a tech tree or in a workbench. And of course, those parameters can be set up for each individual item. So for everyone that's been asking, how do you block certain blueprints for a certain length of time throughout your wipe cycle? This is the plugin that allows you to do that. Yes, there were other options before, but now this is all inclusive, all within one plugin. All right, if you want to check out a couple of other plugins that I've covered for Whispers 88, you can check them out right here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you all next week.